Today, we're learning how to write and graph inequalities. Let's get to it. An inequality is a mathematical sentence that compares expressions. Compares being the key word. If we look at inequality, the prefix in means not in this situation. And just like the word independent means not dependent, inequality literally means not equal. So where an equation would have expressions equal to each other, an inequality has expressions that are compared to each other. So naturally, we're not gonna use an equal sign for inequalities. Instead, we're gonna use inequality symbols. There are four inequality symbols you need to know. The first two you should already be pretty familiar with, and those are less than, or fewer than, and greater than, or you could say more than. The next two are basically if you combined less than and an equal sign together, you would get less than or equal to. And then if you combine a greater than symbol and an equal sign, you would get greater than or equal to. The or in both of those phrases is really important. So when you look at less than or equal to, what that means is the solution could either be less than the number or it could also be equal to. Some other key words to look out for for less than or equal to would be is at most, and then for greater than or equal to, the opposite of is at most would be is at least. And then also is no more than, or the opposite of that would be is no less than. Now that we understand the basics, let's try example one, write as an inequality. So for these, we're gonna do essentially the exact same thing as writing expressions or writing equations. All we're doing are looking for keywords. And we're looking specifically for keywords that are gonna mean an operation, like addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division, and then also keywords that are gonna tell us which inequality symbol to use. So for A, x plus five is more than 11. Well, hopefully plus stands out, and then also more than. So now we're ready to write our inequality. We've got x plus five, and then is more than, if we remember what we hopefully wrote in our notes before, more than is the same as greater than, so we are gonna write greater than 11. And that's our inequality. All right, B, the quotient of w and negative three is at most five. So again, first let's look for our keywords. We've got quotient and is at most. And if we remember quotient is the answer to a division problem, so for here, we are dividing w and negative three. So I'm gonna write that as w over negative three. And then is at most five means w over negative three has to be less than or equal to five. In other words, five is the most that it could be. It could be equal to five, but it could also be less than it. So that's why w over negative three is less than or equal to five. Part C. Negative 12 is at least the product of k and seven. Again, let's look for the keywords. Is at least and the product. Now we're ready to write our inequality, so we're gonna start with negative 12. Is at least means greater than or equal to, if you remember from our notes. And then product is the answer to a multiplication problem, and we are multiplying k and seven but we don't write it as k7. Remember, you always want the coefficient to come first, so we're gonna write that as 7k. So what that means is negative 12 is at least, meaning equal to or greater than 7k. Here's a few to try on your own. Before we get to the next example, let's talk a little bit about what exactly we do with inequalities. You might be asking yourself, do we solve inequalities like we solve equations? And the answer to that is yes, we do. We solve inequalities and try to find solutions. Just like with equations, a solution to an inequality is a value that makes the inequality true. However, the difference with solutions to an inequality compared to an equation is that inequalities tend to have lots, oftentimes infinite solutions. So the set of all of those solutions to an inequality, we would call the solution set. 
So to recap, a solution to an inequality is just a value that makes it true. And all of the solutions together make up the solution set to an inequality. Now let's try example two. Tell whether negative four is a solution to each inequality. We just explained that a solution to an inequality makes that inequality true. So to check if negative four is a solution to these inequalities, we just need to substitute and simplify to see if it makes those inequalities true. So let's start with x minus seven is less than or equal to negative 10. Let's substitute negative four in for x. So we've got negative four now minus seven. Is that less than or equal to negative 10? That's what we're checking. We substituted, now let's simplify. Negative four minus seven gives me negative 11. And the question is, is that less than or equal to negative 10? And negative 11 is to the left of negative 10 on the number line, which means yes, it is less than or equal to negative 10, which means negative four is a solution to that inequality. Let's try B. 4y is greater than negative eight. So again, we're gonna check if negative four is a solution. So first step, substitute. So instead of four times y, I'm gonna write four times negative four. And again, the question is, is that gonna be greater than negative eight? We substituted, now we simplify. Four times negative four is negative 16. Is that greater than negative eight? Well, negative 16 is to the left of negative eight on the number line, which means it's not greater than it, it's less than it. So no negative 16 is not greater than negative eight, which then means negative four is not a solution to that inequality. Here's a few more to try on your own. All right, let's move on to our last example. Graph the solutions to each inequality. So we talked about a solution to an inequality makes inequality true. And you remember that for most inequalities, uh, it's gonna have multiple, if not infinite solutions. So for example, part A says X is greater than negative four. Well, how many numbers are greater than negative four? An infinite amount. So we can't just write down the solution set and list every single number that's greater than negative four. So instead to show the solutions, we use a graph on a number line to show it visually uh, instead of trying to list an infinite amount of numbers. First, we're gonna start with a number line. Make sure you've got the arrows on both ends and then just think about what section of the number line you need to use to graph what you need to graph. Um, I know I'm gonna be around negative four, so all I'm gonna do is start at negative five and just count up by ones. Make sure your spacing is equal and you're being consistent. Uh, so at negative four, we don't want to include it. So what we do is we put an open circle at negative four, which means negative four is not a solution, because negative four is equal to negative four, not greater than it. So I have an open circle at negative four, and then I draw an arrow to the right uh, to show all the numbers that are greater than negative four. And just a tip from me, I would suggest drawing your arrow above the number line, just so it's easier to see. So that's how you graph x is greater than negative four. Let's try b. y is less than or equal to 1.3. Again, let's start with our number line. I know 1.3 is gonna be in between one and two, so I'm gonna set those up as my kind of outer boundaries. And then because I need to graph 1.3, I'm gonna break that up into tenths. Now I'm ready to graph. So y has to be less than or equal to 1.3, which means that 1.3, this time, because it's less than or equal to, I'm gonna put a closed circle at 1.3. And because y has to be less than or equal to, I'm gonna draw my arrow to the left. Last one, negative two and a half is greater than or equal to w. My first suggestion when you have the variable on the right side is to just to rewrite it. 
So instead of negative two and a half is greater than or equal to W, I'm gonna write W is less than or equal to negative two and a half. Means the exact same thing, but it's gonna be a lot easier to graph when it's written this way. Now let's draw our number line. And I know negative two and a half is right in between negative three and negative two, so those are gonna be my outer boundaries. And negative two and a half is right in between. So now we're ready to graph. W is less than or equal to negative two and a half. So I'm gonna put a closed circle at negative two and a half. And then my arrow is gonna to go to the left. And this is why I recommended rewriting the problem first because a lot of people will have their arrow going to the right because when they first looked at it, it was negative two and a half is greater than or equal to W. So they're thinking greater than arrow to the right. But remember, we're graphing the solutions for W. So W has to be less than or equal to negative two and a half, which is why the arrow needs to go to the left. All right, here's a few more to try on your own.